It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith. and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We're so excited to bring the Word of God to you. In our family, my family, Trina's family, our kids and our grandkids, the especially Word of the God, grandkids. especially <laughs> the grandkids, the Word of God has radically wow. changed our lives. We think about it all the way back to the grandpas and the grandmas, yeah. And, yeah. and God is so faithful. His Word is so full of life and power. Today, we're going to bring you a powerful message from the Word of God that I believe uh, will be a great blessing that will change your life. It well, because the Word of God is alive. You know, it's always to date. It doesn't get old. It's not like stale bread, but it works. It's today. It's fresh. It's from God's mouth to our hearts. Yeah, and I just say the Word of God came out of God's mouth, yeah. came out of His mouth, and it was spoken before it was written. And then it was written so it could be spoken. So when you take the Word of God, put it in your mouth, I call it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. resuscitation. <laughs> God. So today we're going to take the Word of God, put it in our mouth, you put it in your mouth. We believe it will change your life. We want to go right into the program and study the Word of God. Now in my family, because there's four, my dad's a pastor, my grandpa's a pastor, all my brothers and sisters, they're all in the ministry and pastors. And so when we got together for Thanksgiving or Christmas, we're all like in different groups. You know what I mean? I'm kind of like in, you know, in the faith group. My other brother, he was like in the Assemblies of God group. And then my sister, her husband is in the Assemblies of God group. And then my other brother, he was like in this other charismatic group, you know. So when you get to Thanksgiving, you know everything that's happening with every preacher and his wife and their kids, right? So all it takes is one of the preachers to bring up something about some other preacher. So they'd bring up something, and somebody would say, ah, bring up something, bring up something, come on. You're sitting around the table. My mama, though, would always do this. When anybody said anything negative about anybody in the church or any other preacher, my mama would start singing. And she would sing louder and louder until you stop talking about whoever they're talking about in any negative form. Now, the song my mama would sing is an old song we used to sing called, Let's Talk About Jesus. <laughs> now, maybe Trina can help me. I don't know if I can sing it, but it would go like this. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. The Lord of Lords, supreme throughout eternity. Don't start screaming while I'm singing. <laughs> it ain't that bad. No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> the great I am, the way, <laughs> the truth, the light, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Y'all know that song? Yep. Oh, how come y'all weren't singing it with me? Now. So if anybody said anything negative about me, my mama would sing that song, let's talk about G, and you could hear her singing in the background, uh, and people are still talking, yeah. and then if you kept talking, she'd get a little bit louder. Y'all ready? Let's talk about Jesus, the King of Kings is he. She'd get a little bit louder, and if you kept talking, she'd get a little bit louder. Let's talk about <laughs> And she would do that until everybody shut up. And when she was in her 80s, my aunt came over and was saying a few things about my mama's sister, because my mama's sister had been an alcoholic and had a few negative problems, but she came out of it, thank God. But my, my aunt would say something about my mama's sister. And those days, my mama, you know, she was getting a little bit older, and she could still walk, but sometimes she'd get in a wheelchair. And so she was sitting there. So my aunt said negative things my, about my mom's sister. So my mom was sitting there. She's 80-something years old. And she goes, let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> so my aunt looks at my sister, who's helping my mom, and my aunt says, uh, is she kind of starting to lose it a little bit? 
because my aunt kept saying negative things. My mama sing louder, let's talk about you. So my sister spoke up and said, no, she's not losing it. She just don't like what you're saying. Are y'all still here? So if you're going to walk in love, how many need to learn that song? Come on, especially among Christians. I ain't talking about heathen. Amen. And so she was saying, because she would say, in other words, we're not going to contaminate or defile our faith with unforgiveness. Come on now. And grudges and offenses. Dad Hagen used to say, anytime, anytime you're feeling mistreated, you know the devil's working on you. So the devil's a master at accusing others to you and accusing you, and he will remind you and actually magnify how you're mistreated. If he can make you feel mistreated enough, you'll actually jump out of a place of blessing and get in a place where you're actually mistreated more than you're presently being mistreated. Thank you for your enthusiasm. In other words, I'm being mistreated. I didn't say you weren't mistreated, I just said he wants to amplify it, make you think about it. But actually, if you have faith in God, you can't be mistreated. Isn't that right? All right, so let me give you these nine characteristics of walking in love, and how many of y'all believe we can actually grow in it? Amen. All right, here's the nine characteristics, you can write them down, and here's the way Henry Drummond says it, love, the God kind of love, analyze, like you would take light, put it through a spectrum, and you would see the different colors that go to make up light, all right? And he says, here's what happens, you put love through a spectrum, here's the, the ingredients. Number one is patience. We've been taught a lot about faith, not a whole lot about patience. <laughs> My daddy always said with God, payday's not always on Friday. That he's a rewarder, he will arrange. I said he will arrange your payday. Everybody say patience. patience. All right, number two is kindness. Love is kind. The word kind simply means active in doing good. Number three is generosity. Love envies not. Envy's not. Really, it's not in competition with others. It actually is happy when other people get ahead. Amen. Uh, next is courtesy. Courtesy. And this is love does not behave itself unseemly. In other words, courtesy, the God kind of love, when you break it down, courtesy simply means uh, love in little things. In little things. All right, next, love is unselfish, seeks not her own, and next is love has good temper. Are you ready? I'm going to go over again. Patience, kindness, generosity, humility, courtesy. All right, patience, kindness, generosity, humility. I'm sorry, I was raised in church all my life, you know, so my daddy's joke was about the guy who actually became the most humble person in the church, so they gave him a button and they had to take it away from him when he started wearing it. <laughs> so. All right, now. All right, I'm going to start over. Y'all ready? All right. Patience, kindness, generosity. Humility, courtesy, unselfishness, good temper simply means it is not provoked. Good temper. And then he says, guilelessness is the next one. Guilelessness simply means it takes not account of evil, not counting up what's wrong with other people. Guilelessness. Number nine is sincerity. Sincerity, that it rejoices not at unrighteousness or it doesn't get happy when it sees other people fail. It actually rejoices in seeing people do the right thing. Amen. Right? All right, so that's nine things. So let me give you a definition real quickly here in my time just about up. And really, I wasn't preaching that long. It's just y'all were listening slow. <laughs> All right. Let's go through this definition, and I'm going to have to skip a bunch of them. But 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16 says that God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God, and God dwells in him. All of the New Testament writers are in agreement. 
that this is the greatest of all. The Apostle Paul, come on, the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 4, 8 says, above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love covers a multitude of sins. James says the same thing. James says, love is the royal law. The royal law. It's a spiritual law. It's the law of the kingdom of God. Is the God kind of love. Amen. And then John, who's known as the apostle of love, he said, when you dwell in love, you will dwell in God, and God dwells in you. Woo. Go ahead and laugh for a minute and say, ha, 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 boy. All right. Now, next, let me give you a little breakdown real quickly here. Number one uh, is patience. Patience. Number two is kindness. That means being kind to others, active. And then number three, I think, is generosity. Is that right? Yes. It envies not. Envies not. So here's what Henry Drummond said. He said, envy is a feeling of ill will to those who are in the same line as ourselves. It is a spirit of covetousness and detraction. Christian work is little protection against unchristian feeling, which is envy, that, that most despicable of all unworthy moods which cloud a Christian soul. <laughs> he said, envy is when, come on, that little thing that you feel like somebody got ahead of you or somebody's doing something better than you. He said, the God kind of love Envy's not. Now, if we can grow in this, you would actually be, regardless of how talented or educated you are, you would actually be probably one of the most prosperous and successful people in any business. I just had a pastor tell me about his sister. Said she never graduated from college, but she has gone straight to the top of her company and makes tremendous amount of money, even though she never went to college, because she is the most loving, kind person and easy to get along people you ever met. And so they promoted her right to the top of her company. Said she's a people person. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. People need love when they deserve it the least. Love is the secret to success. So the devil's a master at accusing others to you and accusing you, and he will remind you and actually magnify how you're mistreated. If he can make you feel mistreated enough, you'll actually jump out of a place of blessing and get in a place where you're actually mistreated more than you're presently being mistreated. Learn important keys to walking in the God kind of love with the four CD set, Love the Secret to Success, and the book, The Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. Your gift of $20 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today. Humility. Humility is love vaunteth not itself. Amen. Don't you hate it when other people keep talking about themselves when you want to talk about yourself? All right, next. <laughs> uh, I'm saying that because a pastor friend of mine, we have another pastor friend, and he keeps talking about himself all the time. And his ministry, his church, and he's just going on and on and on. And so after we got away from him, then my other pastor friend said, don't that just disgust you? That's all he wants to do is talk about himself. Matter of fact, if you had a miracle in your meeting of somebody that had a broken foot and got healed, he would come up with somebody that had two broken feet in his meeting and they got healed. If you come up with somebody that had two broken legs, he would say, somebody actually didn't have no legs and they grew out while I was there <laughs> preaching. So, I mean, he like constantly. like. <laughs> So this preacher pointed that out. He said, don't you get sick and tired of hearing him talk about himself. I said, absolutely. When he keeps talking about himself, it makes me mad because I'm trying to talk about myself. <laughs> and he went, oh, I might be the part. <laughs> 
All right, next is courtesy. <laughs> courtesy. Woo! Woo! Everybody ought to shout. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. How I many know the Holy Ghost can help you with this? Amen. He's in your heart. He helps us. The next one is unselfishness seeks not her own. Simply means that you believe if you'll walk in love, God himself will promote you. If you'll walk in love, God's big enough to get you in the right place at the right time with the right people. Amen. How many believe he's big enough, knows your name, knows your address? He can just get you in the right place. Amen. And you won't even be pushing for it. And you'll just be surprised when it happens. You'll go, whoo, the Lord must have done that. Amen. The next one is good temper. Now, this is the one I want to read just a little bit about here. <laughs> I know you're going to like this one. All right. My time's just about up here. Next is good temper. So you better get the book and read that on good temper. All right. Amen. So not being angry, irritated. Come on. Harsh. Right? Even watching the tone of your voice. Whoo, boy. Now you know why I threw it. All right? I threw the book across the room. And if I read it to you, you'd be throwing it too. You'd say, Lord, have mercy. So, amen. Amen. When I first got married, boy, I just talked to my wife all kinds of ways. Right? I first got married. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm the man around here. <laughs> Ain't going to be no henpeck stuff going on around here. Right? One day she did something I didn't like. I came home and I told her. I said, let me tell you something. I don't like that. And I want it this way. Now, you can get it right. Right? We had just gotten married. And I went back to the bedroom to try to pray. So I went back there. I began to pray. And the Lord said, the Lord said, I don't want to talk to you right now. I said, Lord, me and you are tight. What you mean you don't want to talk to me? He said, you go back out and apologize to your wife before I'm going to talk to you. I said, I bind the devil coming to my mind right now, attacking my mind. I said, please, Lord, you know I'm so spiritual. So I was trying to pray. Lord said, go apologize to your wife. So I got up. I walked in. Trent was in the kitchen. I said, pretty day, isn't it? You're going to try to avoid this any way you can because this is killing you, you know. You're like, I said, I, I want to say I'm a, a, I'm a sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said what I said, but please forgive me. I'm sorry. And I went back and the Lord said, I'll talk to you now. He said, because she's not just your wife, she's my daughter. I went, oh, I have married God's daughter. <laughs> you talking about a hitman coming after you, buddy. Ah! Oh, Lord. Oh, that's when you say, mercy, oh, mercy. All right, let me finish with this here. <laughs> The last one is guilelessness and sincerity. And I just want to read from this book for this one here. Guilelessness. What is guilelessness? Kind of an unusual word. Guilelessness and sincerity. And here's what he says. He says, guilelessness is the grace for suspicious people. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Most people think they have discerning of spirits when really they just got like the gift of suspiciousness. Smith Wigglesworth said, if you had turned that on yourself for about an hour, you'd turn it off. <laughs> so he says, God, this is, is, the, is the grace for suspicious people. He said, it is the possession of it is the greatest secret of personal influence. That means if you want to be a leader and influence others, he says this, you will find if you think for a moment that the people who influence you are people who believe in you. He said, in an atmosphere of suspicion, men shrivel up, but in a trusting atmosphere, they expand and find encouragement and educated fellowship. 
Here's what he says. It is a wonderful thing that here and there in this hard, uncharitable world, there should still be left a few rare souls who think no evil. This is the great unworldliness, love, thinks no evil, imputes no motive, sees the bright side, puts the best construction on every action. What a delightful state of mind to live in. What a stimulus and benediction even to meet with it for one day. And if we try to influence or elevate others, we shall soon see that our endeavor is successful in proportion to their belief of our belief in them. To respect a man is the first restoration of the self-respect he has lost. Amen. And he says, so do that. Respect people that are over you, people that are around you, people that are under you. Amen. People that can do nothing for you. Praise the Lord. To respect or to bring honor. And then he says this. Um, he says of what he is, he said, the, our ideal of what he is becomes to him the hope and pattern of what he may become. In other words, the power of the God kind of love, which is the greatest facet of the gospel and revelation of that love, John says we know about it and we believe in it. We have faith. In the God kind of love. It is God's way. It is our way. He said, and if the moments you have really lived in your life will be the moments you have really loved. Amen. 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 Really love. Amen. Amen. So this love, the greatest. He says, you have one life. You can only live it once. What is the greatest of all virtues? He said, is to major your own the God kind of love, major on. And for that to work, Dad Hagen prophesied, you'll have to read it every morning, every day. How many have been reading it? I read it every day, but I have been known to miss a day or two. And everybody can sure tell. Because that love's in you, but as you renew your mind in it, amen, and confess and declare that you're a lover, you're not a hater. That you're quick to repent, you're quick to forgive, you're quick to believe. You even love your enemies. You bless those who curse you. Come on, you pray. Come on, make a prayer list. Pray, not for God to kill them, but for God to bless them. Amen. Make a prayer list and walk in the God kind of love. You'll grow spiritually. Your faith will work. Hallelujah. And it's the way to victory or it's the way to win. So I thank God for Dad Hagen. Come on, I've been at the table eating with him before when preachers were telling him things that other people were saying, and I watched him go either totally silent or he would simply say, bless their heart. That's it, nothing else. Bless their heart. Bless their heart. Are y'all still here? Some people say, well, I'm in it to do what's right. Sometimes you can be right and still be wrong. Thank you for your enthusiasm. In other words, trying to prove that you're right. In other words, we want Jesus to be magnified and glorified. Thank you for joining us today as we study the Word of God in our lives and our families, just the Word of God, the power of the Word of God mm -hmm. in our home and our family day by day. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the Word of God is inspired by God, and the Word of God is literally God speaking to us. I know, and when you hear a word from God or you come across that scripture that just speaks to you. You know, I like the scripture that David said, I rejoice over your word like somebody that found a great spoil yeah. or found a great treasure, you know, something you really were looking for, you needed, and you go, wow, listen to this. You can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody about it. And the thing about it is when you tell somebody else about it, it's like it explodes in you. So I love the word. You receive it, you, you uh, process it, and then you tell somebody 
and it just continues to go. It's exciting. It's alive. Yeah, the Word of God works mightily and yeah. effectually yeah. in us who believe. And He sent His Word. It healed them. Mm -hmm. So the time you spend in the Word of God will bring supernatural healing, provision. I love Second Peter chapter 1. It says, according as His divine power hath given unto us all, all things, things that pertain to life wow. and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great, great and precious, precious. promises mm -hmm. that by these we might be partakers mm -hmm. of the divine nature yeah. and escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. In other words, when you take the word of God and feed on the word of God and speak the word of God and meditate on the word of God, there's salvation, there's deliverance, there's healing in his word. Right. So I encourage you right now, as you hear the word of God day after day, we so, we're so glad you join us on the program here. You can get on our website, markhankins.org, and there you can get all the products and CDs and uh, the books and listen to the word again and again and again. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. People need love when they deserve it the least. Love is the secret to success. So the devil's a master at accusing others to you and accusing you and he will remind you and actually magnify how you're mistreated. If he can make you feel mistreated enough, you'll actually jump out of a place of blessing and get in a place where you're actually mistreated more than you're presently being mistreated. Learn important keys to walking in the God kind of love with the four CD set, Love the Secret to Success, and the book, The Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. Your gift of $20 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today. So we love you very much. Until next time, may God richly bless you. We want to thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries. For more information, visit the website at markhankins.org or call us at 318-767-2001. Thank you for watching.